why did this general not just refuse to be emperor once, but three times? If you don't know, we're talking about General Tiberius Claudius Pompeianus, son-in-law and one of the closest counselors of Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Born in Antioch, Syria in the early 2nd century AD, Pompeianus rose from humble beginnings to become one of the most respected generals of his time. His father was a high-ranking member of the equestrian order under the senatorial class and, over time, managed to grant Pompeianus Roman citizenship during Claudius's tenure. Pompeianus rose to prominence during the 161 to 166 Roman Parthian War, where he was around 35 years old and under the command of Emperor Lucius Verus, who ruled alongside Marcus Aurelius. Pompeianus's remarkable service led him to the post of senator, and he then served as consul in 162 AD. Having won the trust of Marcus Aurelius, Pompeianus was appointed military governor of Pannonia Inferior following the Parthian campaign. From 164 to 168, he faced a major challenge when a Lombard invasion was followed by a greater threat from the Marcomanni. His victory over the Lombards set him apart as a military leader, and he quickly became a close advisor to Marcus Aurelius. By 169, Lucius Verus had fallen seriously ill and died, leaving Marcus Aurelius's daughter a widow. Her name was Lucilla, and I think you may remember her from the movie Gladiator. As she was the emperor's daughter and still quite young, only 21 years old, Marcus Aurelius arranged a marriage between Lucilla and Pompeianus, who at the time had already achieved the title of consul twice. His marriage to Lucilla solidified Pompeianus's position and attached him to the Nerva Antonine dynasty. Marcus Aurelius's trust in Pompeianus became such that the emperor also invited him to become Caesar and heir, but Pompeianus refused the offer, choosing instead to continue serving as a general. This bit surely reminds us of the scene in the movie Gladiator in which Marcus Aurelius offers Maximus the imperial throne. Indeed, this was the first of Pompeianus's three refusals to be emperor. A decade passed, and in 180 AD, Marcus Aurelius died. Commodus, who was 18 at the time, seized the throne. As an experienced general, Pompeianus attempted to advise Commodus to remain on the Danube frontier until the conquest of the Marcomanni had been completed, just as Marcus Aurelius had intended. But the young emperor had little interest in continuing the war and decided to make a peace agreement with the Marcomanni, returning to Rome in the fall of 180. Two years later, Commodus faced a conspiracy led by his sister Lucilla. The assassination attempt was a failure, resulting in Lucilla and the other conspirators being executed. Since there was no proof of his participation in the plot, Pompeianus's life was spared. Following this conspiracy, Pompeianus, alleging old age and sight problems, withdrew from public life. His decision was motivated not only by the need to avoid retaliation, but also by the growing political instability in Rome. He took shelter on his land in Italy, far from the machinations of imperial power. When Commodus died in 192, Pompeianus returned to Rome and retook his post in the Senate. Pertinax, then urban prefect, offered the imperial throne to Pompeianus, posing a choice that could have changed the course of Roman history. With his remarkable political acumen, Pompeianus surprised everyone by rejecting the offer for the second time, refusing to give in to the temptation of power. Pertinax capitalized on the power vacuum and agreed to be proclaimed emperor, only to be killed by the Praetorian Guard 87 days later. That was when the ambitious senator Didius Julianus succeeded in bribing the Praetorians to ascend the throne. But his quest for backing among the troops of the Roman army was met with some challenges, and Julian became afraid that he would suffer the same fate as Pertinax. Facing this threat to his life, Julianus turned to Pompeianus with an offer to become co-emperor with him. For the third time, Pompeianus refused the offer, saying that he was old and had sight problems, which of course left Julianus vulnerable. On June 1, 192, the senators called on the soldiers to enter the imperial palace and assassinate Didius Julianus. 
Pompeianus cleverly anticipated the instability and political chaos in Rome and opted to remain out of the limelight, living the rest of his life quietly.